depends on where in the world you're watching us from right now. My name is Barry Sullivan from the Cardiff School of Engineering. I look after admissions. Uh, with me today we have Dr. Stephen Bentley, who is the director of MSc courses in the School of Engineering. He's also from the Institute of Environment and Sustainability and a engineering geologist by trade. Is that right, Steve? That's right, yeah. I'm an engineering geologist by trade, been teaching in a civil and structural engineering department for quite a few decades, and I look after, in particular, the civil and structural engineering MSCs. That's right. I, I think we should make clear that this uh, webcast is going to be discussing the MSC in civil engineering and structural engineering that we offer here in the Cardiff School of Engineering, two of our, uh, probably our most popular MSCs over the past few years, wouldn't you say? Uh, they, they are popular MSCs. I, I think they're popular because of the ranking of civil engineering at Cardiff. Um, rankings vary from year to year, but uh, Cardiff civil and structural engineering is usually in the top four, uh, often in the top two. So it's very, very highly ranked. And when you consider that there are probably 200 universities that offer civil and structural engineering, to be in the top four is really a very high class and that explains why we get a lot of applications and the numbers enrolled are very high. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, why do you think we are ranked so high? What is it about Cardiff that makes us special? I think we've got an, a unique balance in the staff that we employ here. We are very research active so we write world-class international papers on engineering subjects, all engineering subjects. So the research we do here is of very, very high quality. But balanced with that is that most of the professors who work here have worked in industry and have practical experience before they became university professors. So we've got this unique blend of excellence in research and being a very practical department. And I think that's what you get from studying civil or structural engineering here at Cardiff. You get a practical degree. So it's a passport to a career and to a job. And that's why our numbers are so high, I believe. I think, obviously, that is very important uh, for many of our students, including our overseas students. They're going to be investing quite a bit of time and money into doing an MSc. And they want to make sure that that investment is going to pay off in a, in a good career and a good job afterwards. So maybe turning towards uh, our employment prospects, I know this is one of the questions we get most often from students. What sort of jobs are our graduates typically going into and what countries uh, are they going back to? What types of organizations are they working for? Okay, well, m most of our international students uh, tend to go back home, whether it's to China or to, to India or to Nigeria or to the Middle East to work. Most of our MSc graduates go into consultancy, engineering consultancy, which is designing the project, designing the structure, designing the bridge, designing, designing the project. Um, the, these can be large global companies that operate in the home countries or they could be large national companies that are just specific to China or India, Nigeria or, or Middle East countries. But from these huge global companies, say, we also get people who go back to the family firm, the family company. Um, so that there's, a, there's, a, there's a vast range. It's also common, not terribly common, but common for some international students to get jobs in the UK as soon as they graduate. So that possibility uh, should be explored if you fancy one or two or three years working in the UK before perhaps returning home. And the companies that you could work for in the UK would be these global consultancies, these global design companies who would have offices in China, in India, in Nigeria, in the Middle East. So you could start with a company in the UK and then go back home with them. And that would be a good way of establishing yourself with one of these companies. But overall, the employment prospects for our graduates are extremely high. That's what they come for, and that's what we, we deliver. I th if you could maybe rewind a bit, um, as we're, we're talking about the civil and structural MSCs, 
Could you maybe briefly explain to us what the differences between the two MSCs are, if there is any difference? Sure, there, there are differences. Uh, maybe the differences are slightly subtle. It's all to do with construction, really, in one form or another. But structures concentrates on the actual structure, whether it be a bridge or a hotel or a, a new university, for example. So really, we're talking about from the ground up whether that's in steel or in reinforced concrete. So there's all sorts of design issues when you're designing a structure and you get a thorough training in that design. If I run through some of the modules for the structural engineering uh, degree, um, you'll be doing things like steel structures, advanced concrete materials, advanced structural mechanics, tensile structures, dynamics, a real broad spectrum of and uh, structural engineering subjects. On the civil side, the civil engineering course is broader. It's not just the structure going out of the ground. We've got to consider the foundations of the structures. So there's, we have a course in advanced soil mechanics, geotechnics. There's also water engineering, environmental engineering, hydraulics, rock engineering, much broader subjects covered there. So if I run through some of the civil engineering subjects, we have environmental hydraulics, advanced soil mechanics, engineering geology, water quality management, these sorts of things. And then you have a choice of some of the structural modules to go with those civil ones. So civil engineering is really water, soil and rock and structures. The structures MSc is mostly structures with just a sprinkling of these broader subjects. Okay. Of course, the main difference comes when you do your dissertation. The, the, the overall structure of the course is that there are three 12-week semesters. And in the first semester, you study six modules. In the second semester, you do four modules and a literature review, which is preparation for your research, uh, your research thesis. And in the third semester, you just do the research thesis. There's no modules, there's no formal teaching. So when you are choosing the project that you want to do, the project that you're going to do the literature review for, and then the research dissertation, that choice will be either a, a, a civil engineering, water, geotech type subject, or you'll go for a structural project. And you'll be devoting pretty much six months of the year to that project. So that's where the real learning comes from. And when doing that project, the literature review and the research dissertation, you'll be working on a one-to-one -one basis with one of the professors here, and you'll be getting very, very detailed uh, education in a specialist subject. I hope that's made clear. Yeah, no, it is, it is made clear. Um, it raises two questions for me, though. Uh, the first one being is, as the structural and civil MSCs are so similar, is it possible to switch between the two once you've started? Yes, it is. Um, the, the, in the first semester, there's the most commonality is in the first semester. So I would say that up until the end of the first semester, so we're talking October through to December, up until December, you could switch between the MSC courses and that would be no problem. Very often students are choosing an MSc because of the name, structural engineering, civil engineering. So if once you've come to Cardiff, if you think it would be better to have an MSc with the other name, then what we're saying is within the first 12 weeks, you could switch, no problem at all. Great. Um, another thing that you mentioned uh, when you were explaining the differences between structural and civil, you talked about being able to work with supervisor, your project supervisor, one-to-one. -one. Um, for even though these two MSCs are the large, probably usually the largest we have in terms of uh, class size, they're still very small compared to most parts, most other universities in the UK with about 25 to 35 students on the MSC, which I think, as you mentioned, is, is one of our uh, strong points because students are working in smaller groups and have a lot more uh, time with their academics. Is that right? Yeah, I think the important thing to point out here is that the 
the project that you do for your MSc is your project. You don't share it with anyone else. It's not a group project. It's specific to you. You are the only person working on that topic. So therefore, your discussions with your project supervisor or your professor will just be essentially one-to-one -one because that is your topic. No one else is doing it. The other thing to mention is that we have about, in the civil and structural area combined, we have about 30 academics. Um, so each academic would only supervise one or two MSc students. So you're getting, you're getting a good service from the academic. Well, you certainly should get a good service from the academic. Certainly. Um, could you maybe talk about some of the projects that you've supervised recently? What, what were the titles? Uh, were they linked with industry? Uh, any, any projects that stood out for you as being exceptional? Well, I'm, a, I'm an engineering geologist, as we said at the beginning of this uh, broadcast. So my projects tend to be in that area. What, what I've been working with students recently is on hazard mapping, trying to predict the hazard before the hazard occurs. And the two types of hazard we've been looking at recently are landslide hazard. If you, if you follow the press, there's also always some sort of slope failure that, that, that's killing dozens and dozens of people. So we, we look at trying to predict where those landslides would happen. And uh, I, I'm interested in looking at that problem all around the world. So we've been doing landslide hazard mapping in China, uh, in, in other parts of the world. The second type of hazard map that I've been working on recently with MSc students is seismic hazard. Now th this, this steps over really into structural engineering because what we're looking at here is taking an area, again it could be in China, looking at reinforced concrete buildings, looking at advanced reinforced concrete buildings built to a high standard, and also looking at fairly poorly built masonry structures. And then we're looking at the ground conditions, the geology. We're, we're applying some seismic wave to that area. And we're trying to predict what will happen to the different types of structures built on different geological materials. And that's been quite interesting. And we do a, we do a comparison. We do a back analysis with some of the big earthquakes that have happened like Haiti and in Christchurch in New Zealand. And we, we test our, our new methodology and say, well, let's predict it for Haiti and see how it works because we know what the damage was there. Let's predict what was going to happen in Christchurch. Well, we know what happened in Christchurch. But if we can do that accurately, accurately, we can go into a province of China or India or Nigeria and we can do a similar thing there. Great. So those are the two standout ones for me. Okay. Um, just trying to keep this fairly brief, so I'm, I'll move on to the next point. Uh, obviously, we get a lot of, of our students coming directly from their undergraduate course where they've done civil engineering, and no doubt they'll be in a good position to come here and, and do well. But for those students that come to us after being in, out in industry for a few years, do you have any tips for them and things maybe they want to brush up on before they arrive to make sure that they succeed? I, th I think we, we, we have, from time to time, we have quite mature uh, students coming onto our MSc, and they've got a wealth of practical uh, construction knowledge and experience, and they bring an awful lot to the group, uh, you know, when they share their experiences in class and, and so on. I think one of the things that they, they might have lost touch with is, 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 is academic work, and particularly the mathematics. Uh, you know, this is a, a top flight engineering school here at Cardiff, and a lot of what we do is highly mathematical. So I think brushing up on the mathematics uh, would be a good tip before you, uh, before you land in Cardiff. Good. I, I think all of the other uh, course directors I've talked to have also said the same for their MSc, um, but very consistent. That's, that's good. Um, l last, last question, I think, from me would would be to talk about our industrial links. Um, do we do do our MSc students go out for any site visits, or do we bring industry in to deliver any lectures, or are our students working on projects that are linked with industry? Well, the, first of all, the, the the School of Engineering has its own industrial advisory board, 
So we have a group of about 20 or 30 industrialists who come to the school three or four times a year and guide us so that what we do is what industry want. And this goes back to my comment that we are a practical department. <clears throat> as far as direct links with industry, um, with the course, I can give you an example from my course. I teach a course in engineering geology and <clears throat> I bring in uh, a company called Atkins, which is a global consultancy company. And one of the technical directors of Atkins is an old student of mine. And he comes in and gives a, a two hour lecture on tunneling. And this two hour lecture covers tunneling in South Africa, in Hong Kong, in New York, in London, everywhere. It's, it blows the minds of the students. Really inspirational lecture. Uh, and he's also looking for students to employ. So at the end of the lecture, he gives out his business card. He invites them to send CVs to him. He's looking for good students. So that's the sort of thing that happens in my course. That's the sort of thing that happens in other modules as well. It's a good practical degree. Good. Um, well, uh, you know, I I've, I've want to thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Um, I know you're very comfortable in front of the camera. I think I've seen you on the BBC a few times. Uh, but this is the first time we've done this with the, the computer. I hope it worked out well for you. Is there anything else you want to add before we uh, wrap up? I don't think so. I think I've, uh, I think we've covered most things, Barry. Thank you, yes. Okay. Come to Cardiff, uh, you won't regret it. The, the, the other thing to say, of course, is that Cardiff is a great city. Carry on. Tell the other thing to say is that Cardiff is a great city. It's a capital of Wales. It's got all the things a capital city should have but it's relatively small, only 350,000 people, 50,000 of them are students, it's a student city. Uh, it's cosmopolitan, it's safe, and it doesn't rain all the time. We're in a, we've got a heat wave going on at the moment, so come to Cardiff, you'll enjoy yourself. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Speaking as a foreigner myself, originally from New York, I've been in Cardiff for about eight years now, and I love it, it's definitely my, my home for life. Um, for those of you who now have your results issued, Please don't forget to upload them to your Sims profile so we can uh, make your offer unconditional. Or if you can't, you can email it to engineering-pg at cardiff.ac.uk. If you have any other questions uh, that you weren't able to submit in advance, uh, please do email them to us here, and I'll, I'll be sure to talk to Dr. Bentley about that. Um, but thanks for joining us, as always. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye, Steve. Bye, Barry.